Roads begin to appear as lines and markings while colossal buildings shrink to mere rectangles as we begin our journey away from the Earth. Ascending higher and higher into the atmosphere, the large cumulus clouds begin to appear as small blotches hanging over the Earth's surface. During no other time in Earth's history has man seen his home planet from this perspective until the last century, yet the Bible records in the book of Job, He spreads out the northern skies over empty space. He suspends the earth over nothing. And in the book of Nahum we read, His way is in the whirlwind and the storm, and clouds are the dust of his feet. What better description could have been given by our own astronauts? The clouds were like the dust under their feet, too. The beauty of our home planet becomes inspiring as we travel over the Earth's continents. The Earth's sphere is clearly evident, and the blue oceans, brown and green land masses, and puffy white clouds dazzle the eyes as we ponder this heavenly gem which God created. The Earth is a remarkably balanced environment on which man could not exist if it were not so. If the Earth's atmosphere were thinner or thicker than it presently is, harmful radiation would destroy animal and plant life on the Earth. If the Earth were too close or too far from the Sun, the drastic temperatures upon the Earth would make life impossible here. If the atmosphere were not composed of the proper gases, in precisely the right proportions, no life could exist. For this is what the Lord says, He who created the heavens, He is God. He who fashioned and made the earth, He founded it. He did not create it to be empty, but formed it to be inhabited. He says, I am the Lord, and there is no other. The earth is the only planet in the solar system known to harbor life. Our planet's rapid spin and molten nickel-iron core give rise to an extensive magnetic field, which, along with the atmosphere, shields us from nearly all the harmful radiation coming from the sun and other stars. Earth's atmosphere protects us from meteors, most of which burn up before they can strike the surface. In the beginning you laid the foundations of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. If the moon were any closer to the earth, huge sea and land tides would make life impossible on this planet. The list could go on and on into the hundreds of thousands or perhaps even higher. The more we learn about our world, the more we learn about its finely balanced workings. Until just over several decades ago, man had not seen such a view of his home, but the prophet Isaiah was not ignorant of the earth's shape, even though many scholars and thinkers of that era thought the earth was flat. God revealed to Isaiah just what the true shape of the earth was over 2,700 years ago. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy, and spreads them out like a tent to live in. It seems peculiar that many still believe the lie that the earth came into being by chance. If one were to find a watch along the road and pick it up and examine its workings, he would assume that a watchmaker had fashioned and designed it. Yet when we see the earth functioning in harmony with its almost infinite complexity, why do many still doubt that there is an intelligent designer of this intricate planet? God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. The moon, the age-old nighttime sentinel and beacon from the beginning of time, is the Earth's nearest neighbor, being some 384,000 kilometers away. Yet man's technology has only enabled him to reach the nearest object of God's creation with great expense, difficulty, and effort in a matter of several days. The moon, if placed next to the earth, 
would appear to cover about two-thirds of the area of the United States, as it is some 3,475 kilometers in diameter. This familiar companion to the Earth is the cause of the tidal activity here on the Earth. If the Moon didn't cause the tidal activity that it does on the Earth's seas, much of the tidal based sea life would vanish, and important links in many of the ocean's food chains would disappear. To the naked eye, the Moon often appears to have a face or other mirage-like forms. This is due to dark and light areas upon the Moon's surface. Upon closer examination, the Moon appears to be riddled with holes called craters. These craters have been observed to range in size from a few feet to hundreds of miles. Through moderately sized telescopes, thousands of these craters can be seen. Here we see a crater with rays emanating from it. These rays are the remnants of material strewn about in great arcs after the collision of a large body of rock with the moon's surface. Astronomers have compared the number of craters on the moon's far side to the number on its near side and discovered that in the past the moon must have shielded the earth from swarms of meteors in space. This is evidenced by the greater number of craters on the moon's far side. When dust and rock floating in the immense vacuum of space happen to pass into the orbit of the moon, craters such as these are formed when the materials impact with the surface. Some areas of the moon have mountainous regions much like on the earth. Some of these mountains reach heights as high as that of Mount Everest. The center of this crater shows a bird's eye view of one such mountain. If a large piece of rock strikes the moon's surface, the moon may quake under the tremendous impact. Plumes of fiery hot material can be strewn in various directions. Because of such frequent impacts, and the lack of any atmosphere on the moon, it is extremely unlikely that there could be any form of life on the moon. Even though man has successfully journeyed to the moon, enabling him to take splendid photographs in orbit around the moon and from the surface, the Bible gives clear warning to anyone who would exalt himself above God, as is found in the book of Obadiah. Though you soar like the eagle and make your nest among the stars, from there I will bring you down, declares the Lord. As seen from the moon, the earth appears much like a blue ball which one could hold in his hand. Yet our very lives depend on this round sphere, a planet that appears so insignificant on the scale of the universe. <laughs>